Now let's proceed to silicon, the second synthetic item that we can produce in Serpolo. For now, let's deal with production using silicon smelters, the small boys that we first use in the early game. Don't forget that the schematics and maps are in the description. First, let's talk about the basics with the four silicon smelter design. You don't need to connect power in this thing because it is already producing its own power using the combustion generators. Another one. This time with two belts of sand, also self-powered. Then we have the seven silicon smelter design. It needs two full belts of sand to work and it needs external power. In return, it provides one full belt full of silicon. And also, this complex 12 silicon smelter design that needs three belts of sand and two belts of coal. This produces almost two full belts of silicon. Not 100% efficiency. Now, when you are lazy, we can directly feed sand into the silicon instead of manually wiring it. Just insert coal into this stackable design and you can produce silicon with ease. To make it power itself, you can replace the sorter to a combustion generator. Another one. Remember, seven silicon smelters running at full power will always give one full belt of silicon. Next, we have the 12 silicon design with sand installed. We'll produce two belts of silicon. You can either have this raw schematic or this design that has batteries scattered in the borders. Just look at this beauty. This will single-handedly resolve all of your silicon problems. Well, in the early game at least, you have to endure the pain of Siligon. Let's talk about the Holy Grail, the one that you will use the most in multiplayer. The core silicon design, which produces free silicon for some coal and sand upkeep thrown into the core. In case you have spare thorium and you need extra silicon production, you can use this small five silicon design. It doesn't use unloaders, so it cuts down some material cost. Here's a smaller and very compact six silicon design, but it uses some unloaders. Lastly is this big design that produces two full belts of silicon. Not 100% efficiency. Now, we proceed to the sand to silicon schematics, which literally need nothing, but they are incredibly hungry on power and it's very inefficient. Please utilize this with caution. Check out this other video to learn more. First are the black sand schematics, starting with these designs. Then we have this seven black sand silicon design. Well, we also have this overrated 10 silicon design. Building any more than one of this just makes no sense. You can just use crucibles instead. We also have white sand versions, starting with these two small designs. Next is the seven white sand silicon design. Any further than this is either just overkill or unnecessary. Again, just build crucibles. Next are the unconventional methods. Starting with this weird four silicon schematic that needs water, power, and sand to produce some usable silicon. And finally, we have this schematic where it needs to be partially submerged on water for it to work. So, to sum it up, here are the essential schematics that you will need for your playthroughs. They are these seven silicon designs because they're already optimized for use. This big two belt silicon design, this silly core design for ranked or hex, these coal pre-built designs, and this seven black sand schematic. Also, these four silicon designs prove useful in the earliest of times. The schematics folder, maps, and other links are in the description. Enjoy! Check out this guide next, or this video.